Yo, what up, Mark here, and look, I ain't gonna waste no time. We gotta address the elephant in the room, okay? Because the end of this chapter has the community absolutely losing their minds, okay? This whole V inside a bomb thing, the outside God, the promise one shit, everybody's losing their minds, okay? These theories are going crazy, so let's get into it. By the way, hit that sub, you already know. Your boy almost to 2,000. We about 100 away, 100 and some change. So get me there, let's get it. Now, again, starting with the elephant in the room. What is this bomb inside of V or V inside a bomb thing? What is this, okay? I don't know, okay? Y'all know me, I come up with theories, I throw my shit out there. And I usually have a lot of good ones, um, especially when it comes to Sahara Family Hits. I love the lore around that. The bomb stuff has always been such a background theory for me because I've never had any hard takes on it. Now, I've been sitting and reading everybody's theories for the last couple days, and everybody seems to have some fair points, to be honest. There's nothing that's too outside the line here because... Who would have thought that V was inside a bomb? Nobody. Nobody predicted this. Um, now, there were hints along the way that we can go back as far as the hidden floor. There's, um, I mentioned in the stream last week that Urek told Bomb on the Hell Train that, hey, no matter what you hear about yourself, you are you. Never lose yourself. And we all had different interpretations of these things during the time because you know that climbing the tower can change you. Then, you know, hence what Urek was saying. But a lot of the details that we heard from Graham, like about um, Arlen and the, the, the dead bomb child and V committing uh, S-side, all that stuff does not mean that, you know, things went one way. Like, and we did get from Graham that you know that was a biased perception i'm told from arlene's side so there are bits and pieces missing here so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna try to go through the theory that i think makes the most sense to me right now that doesn't mean that it's something that i completely 100 percent agree with but i do think it has some uh, merit to it and i'll also add my little caveat to it at the end of this so the thing that I'm hearing, at least in my Discord, um, the most, and some a little bit in other spaces, Bomb is a vessel, okay? Bomb is the vessel that was supposed to be for V, um, and that Rachel is the reason why he's not the way he's supposed to be. So, Bomb was a possibly a vessel or a creature created for V, and that maybe, you know, I'm going to add a little bit of my own sense into it, maybe Bomb was supposed to age to a certain point um being stuck in that cave um v soul that's within the vessel is supposed to manifest and i guess take over bomb's body um i think it makes the most sense one everybody has always said that the 25th bomb is the 25th night that bomb was born what if and this is my own take what if this is the 25th version of bomb what if this creature that is supposed to be bomb has been created 25 times and that 25 is the number and the 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 experiment or the creature of bomb that worked what if the necromancy play that we got from trom and all the research and stuff that he did and remember we suspected that it was possibly arlen who snuck into trom's uh mothership to look at the you know the stuff that he's done what if that was all to create bomb what if the idea of that comes from Bomb. Because we know that Arlen and Bomb is a, a passed away child. Bomb passed away, okay? we I can't say what I want to say, but Bomb passed away. What if she got a lot of her knowledge of reanimating things, the necromancy from Trump? And it kind of makes sense in a way if you want to take it that route. Now, Bomb being a vessel, I don't necessarily love that play um but it, it it makes the most sense now v getting into the v part so v is supposed to be committed as side right and that that was what was left but i don't know if that to be particularly true um especially now given that a part of his soul is within this vessel which is supposed to be bomb what if the plan between arlen and v was for V to have his soul transfer into this vessel. So what if something happened to V's shell, right? Because y'all gotta remember, V is not immortal. V is not immortal, guys, okay? 
The rest of the family hits are immortal. Remember, the 100th contract on the 100th floor is the eternal life contract, okay? So the eternal life contract stops them from aging. V never took that. So to be honest with you guys, we don't know how long the Zahard Wars with the Grace people and V started, but V could have been very, very aged, okay? So what if the bomb, the child that is bomb, destroyed by Zahard, what if the plan was like, okay, V's gonna die and my child's dead. Maybe that's what was driving Arlen kind of crazy is that she's losing, you know, her family. She puts V's soul into the passed away child and the child would grow on the outside not only that the child would grow with a different kind of power maybe the whole thing with arlen ple pleading with the outside god was to give this vessel a certain amount of power because again zahar's not supposed to take over the tower zahar is not supposed to be the king if we take what Enryu said right so given that given that what if this was an entire plan right what if the entire plan was to get this vessel v was supposed to um age within this vessel and grow into this body kind of like a seed but something else happened rachel could be the reason um but it's hard to understand that part of it which i agree with a lot of people why would rachel you know get an attachment get an attachment to this beast if she knew what it was and then give it kind of life right like kind of create memories with bomb talk to bomb kind of nurse him like why would she do that right it doesn't really make sense from that part and it's hard to understand that especially when she grows to resent him um but we know that like you know but we know that the bomb is supposedly not supposed to be the promised one right this bomb this person who is the character bomb is not supposed to be the promised one we got it from that machine that you know um, shoots people over uh, that transfers people that when it asks bomb um who are you and you know and dorsey answer for him that bomb is bomb but bomb is not supposed to be the promised one right what if the the whole plan the person who was supposed to take over for everybody the one that was destined is v what if it's v now the emily the machine may have some information or some knowledge that maybe and maybe even less like and the grace people were waiting for v's resurrection maybe they were waiting for that maybe they don't even know that bomb is a different character than the v maybe they're waiting for v to grow into this person i don't know um this is it it kind of messes with everything that we know about the story currently and how we've watched bomb grow and granted i do not let me make this clear i do not think that bomb is going away anywhere i don't think we're gonna lose bomb i don't think bomb's soul is going to be taken over um i don't think there's going to be any possession type thing i think that bomb is going to be his father and they're going to kind of do the same thing that would happen with white bomb's going to talk to him learn from him possibly get taught these power and get taught a better way because this V that's in the vessel seems kind of arrogant, but this has got to be Bomb's father. Now, some people are saying, there's another side of the theory that people are saying that this is the outside God and that this V is a false image of V and that it's the outside God mixed with V. It just has the perception of being V. Now, why that is, I don't necessarily know, but I know that's another theory that people are throwing out. Some people are saying that this is um, Leviathan um trying to convince Enkidu to like kind of work with them type thing i saw some theories about that i actually have no idea where that comes from but the one that makes the most sense with me and what i'm kind of walking with is that v was probably aging out and that with the passing of the baby bomb that was murked by zahar watching arlen struggle and then they came up with this sinister plan to put V into her baby's body, which ultimately I can see as a mother that would like mentally destroy you as a person. Um, trying to understand like this whole concept of like your child's not your child and your child's body is being used. And it's it's kind of crazy, right? But it makes a lot of sense to me. Um, and, you know, even, you know, we can't even really answer 
why Traumery was doing experiments and why possibly if that was Arlen, why she snuck in to even look at the experiments or to get and understand what's going on. Maybe they were already coming up with a plan. You know, maybe going back outside the tower and to ask the outside guy for extra power created something for them. You know, the whole idea to me, it seems like that the Grace people, they, I don't think they're stupid people. They had to know that they were outclassed by the Great Family Heads versus the Grace people. They had to be know they're outclassed. So maybe there was a backup plan or the, the big plan was to create a child of prophecy, which would then be V, who would grow and get some extra help with not only V's power, but the outside guy's power, the thorns, everything that would be needed to destroy Zahar. I don't know, guys. Y'all let me know what y'all think about that. That's not necessarily my theory, but I did add some pieces into it. Now, let's get into the chapter. So everything is from Bomb's perspective, and Bomb arrives on the field to see Gustang and Trump fighting, um, and then he sees Andorsi working with Belier. Now, Belier and Andorsi, they always chose to, they already had chose to backstab each other. Um, Belier is trying to convince um, the, the beast Holland to give him um, the chess piece, but obviously Holland's way out of his mind. Um, and, and Dorsey gets it in her head that she can get it and she tries to get it and as she reaches and grabs it, um, Bellier slash and Kidu, you know, kind of takes over her body and then Bomb gets involved. Now an important part to remember about this is that Bellier does mention the Holland to remind him like, hey, your family leader will lose his position and also the grace that was given to him by the administrator. Now what is this grace? I see a lot of people going back and forth about this. Guys, the grace is the ability to be murked by Towerborn. It's not the eternal life. The eternal life is the 100th floor that was given for non-aging. It would probably be the being able to be murked by um, Towerborn. That's probably what that is, which is considered to be the King's contract. Now from here on, a lot happens. Um, we get Bomb getting involved and there's a scuffle between Bellier slash Enkidu and then Holland also noticing that Bomb's there. And Enkidu talking spicy, like trying to see what's up with Bomb. And we know Bomb, like Bomb has some pretty high arrogance right now from his fight with Dumas, but Bomb not sweet. So Bomb is giving it to Enkidu low key. <laughs> Uh, also trying to protect and help Andorsi, who, okay, like, we can admit that Andorsi's use of Bong Bong is good. It's good. It's how, it's been good. I don't think that's never been anybody's critique. It's just the fact that that's all she is, you know, that's always been the problem. She's a one-trick pony, right? Um, but, you know, she is aware of her weakness, and I hope this comes to matter later on, um, that she realizes that she can't do anything and that she could possibly train on the things that she can't do. Now, what happens is, um, Enkidu keeps targeting Anne Dorsey, and he kind of understands that Bomb is going to protect her, so he uses that to his advantage to try to go and get her, and Bomb does the, uh, uh, your orb, and Bomb's talking shit. Bomb's talking shit to Holland and Enkidu, like, what's up? Like, y'all, y'all can fight as hard as y'all can. Like, that's that arrogance that came from them white souls, man. Bob was not like that before, and I love that. Y'all see, man, soul mixing ain't that bad, right? It ain't that... All right, I'm playing, I'm playing, but we never know what happened with V. But, um, you know, Enkidu does notice the weakness, and he goes after him, Dorsey. Now, at Bomb goes to protect her because Holland's attacking. Um, Enkidu gets behind Bomb and is going to try to take over his body. And then we get this crazy moment. Enkidu bit off more he can chew by going inside Bomb by going inside Bomb's body and you know he runs into Leviathan who's about to devour him but doesn't and then we get the exchange with him and this hole. Now this hole, this chasm that has existed for a while, um, Leviathan has seen it, we've seen it when it was a different color, this hole has existed for a while but this is the first time we've seen it actually speak. So it tells Enkidu like, hey, you're a peculiar creature, meaning that this this creature, this this power has the ability to analyze things that touch it. First of all, that's crazy. And I wonder if like the Red Thressa, the Blue Thressa, um, Leviathan, everything else, Black March, everything that's come across this hole has avoided it. Like I wonder if like it realizes that there's something wrong with that um, because we don't see anything else around it, but it has been seen in other scenes. Now. Um, and Kidu's trying to figure out what it is, and then we get the, um, it calling itself V, and it's saying that it's, uh, a god, um, and it seems to want to work with Enkidu, but it sounds like a, a manipulation type thing, right? So, um, I wonder if Enkidu's gonna, like, tear the hole apart or something crazy like that, um, I don't know, but that's basically how the chapter ends with it calling itself V, and yeah, 
So um, I gave you guys my theories behind that in the beginning, but this chapter is by far a 9 out of 10. Um, CU has been cooking um past two weeks, okay? I love last week's chapter, this week's chapter. I hope we do get a POV change, though. We need a little bit of a change of pace. Um, you know, Bomb has been very, um, not irrelevant, but boring with the Duma stuff, um, in my opinion. Now, um, the wrap-up of the Duma stuff was good, but um, this was very good. And it moved a lot. Oh, also, shout out to CU and his people, man. Long ass chapter, bro. Like, we, who, that could have been two chapters, to be honest. Like, geez, how long that chapter was. But very good stuff. I'm glad it was all in one. Um, and yeah, I hope we get a POV change next week because I kind of want to see what's going on with Yama. I really want to know what's up with Yama. Um, but other than that, guys, um, yeah, I'll see you guys Friday for the stream per usual. Um, it'll be, you know, a solid one. Um, I'll do it a little bit earlier this time, maybe around 2, two or 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, I actually have to work this Friday, so it's going to be different for me because I never work Fridays. Yeah. Um, other than that, thanks guys. I'll see you in the Discord. Peace.